Ahead of the emergency EU summit, interior ministers reached a breakthrough agreement to relocate some 120,000 migrants. And for an in-depth look into the latest developments, we turn to Melinda Crane, reporter for Deutsche Welle. Welcome to our newscast, Melinda. First, let's start with the quota system that should be implemented. Could you clarify how feasible and effective it will be? Well, the best case scenario from the perspective here in Berlin is that this represents a first step toward establishing the principle of fair distribution according to a key, a formula that's based on countries' uh, economic strength and also on the size of their population. But it has two big weaknesses. First of all, it was agreed by majority vote rather than by consensus. In practice, it's hard to imagine how we're going to be sending refugees to countries that have said from the beginning they don't want them. Secondly, this particular agreement covers just 120,000 refugees. That is a small fraction of the number that have been pouring across the borders of the EU. So it may be a beginning. It may establish that first principle of fair distribution, but there's still a long way to go. Right. So these four Eastern European countries, uh, other than the obvious reasons, what are some of the uh, driving factors that's, uh, that's causing them to strongly oppose the EU's recent move? Well, the first one is that these are countries uh, whose economies are not very strong. They are among the newest uh, members of the EU. They also haven't got a lot of experience with migrants, many of them with very, very small uh, populations of people with a migration background. They would receive a, a per capita compensation from Brussels for the refugees that they take in. So those are two crucial factors. Another very, very important factor, politics. Many of these countries which are objecting are countries that have right-wing political movements. They, of course, do not want to give uh, those movements any cause for grievance. Who you let into your country, that is an absolutely central element of national sovereignty. These countries are all countries that were, uh, that were emerged uh, after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Uh, they're very concerned about their national sovereignty. It's still fresh for them, and therefore a lot of questions for them surrounding an order like this one. But many experts fear, Melinda, that the chaos will continue unless more sophisticated reform measures are formulated. Will we see some positive improvements soon? Well, as I say, I think that this agreement does represent a first step. It has a second element that we didn't talk about beyond the distribution uh, agreement. There's also a, an agreement to set up uh, registration centers at our, what, what are called the hot spots, where most of the refugees are coming in. That's in Greece. That's in Italy. This is absolutely crucial to fix the broken asylum system here in Europe. We need a comprehensive registration process at the first point of entry so that it's clear who among these migrants are actually entitled to political asylum and who among them are perhaps just looking for a better life economically because those people, the people in the second category, they do not have a right to be taken in by European countries and it's very important to filter them out as soon as they get to the EU borders. So that's another very important step, one of the things that has to happen, but there's a lot of other work to be done as well in terms of who takes these migrant migrants in, who pays for them, and how do we address the root causes of migration in the first place. All right, thank you so much for your report, Melinda, reporting live from Berlin at the Deutsche Welle.